Hey, we're here with Simon and Kathy from Fanfarlo. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you. Thank Do you. I have a, is the pronunciation Fanfarlo? Um, well, it depends which language. <laughs> Fair enough. It can't, well, it's, it's a French um, name to begin with. Where, where, where is it from? It's, uh, we stole it uh, <laughs> from uh, uh, a novella by Charles Baudelaire. He's this 19th century writer. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. I think part, part of the appeal with the sort of... I just thought it was a beautiful name, but I think part of the appeal is that it kind of works in a lot of different languages. Right. Cool. Um, listening to your record, the first thing that leaps to mind is just the tremendous music scape of it all. I mean, there's just a lot of layers, a lot of rich layers, and a lot of instruments. So there, it's quite lovely. a lot of layers. <laughs> there are. I, I'm, yeah. how, what goes into... How long does it take to produce a record like that? Well, we spend six week making, weeks making that record. We could have spent longer on it, but that's kind of as much, we, as much time as we could afford. <laughs> I would imagine that um, because there are so many musicians in the band and, and the, there's so much layering and texture and instrumentation that there are so many influences to this band. Mm -hmm. what, what would some of those influences be? For, for um, well, they you come know. from all over. I mean, we, yeah. we all play different things. So Leon, the trumpet player, for example, uh, has been inspired by some mariachi stuff when he was in Mexico. Um, I'm really into like 60s pop strings right. as a string player. Um, you know, our bassist is a metal fan. I'm yeah. not sure how much that. Yeah, I, that I don't get that at all. Inspires his bass. I mean, playing. he's still, I think uh, he was a lot. He was listening to a lot of metal now, but I think he was listening to a lot of rockabilly at the time. Okay, yeah. And, you know, true. well, we all kind of share influences as well, right. I guess. Uh, I mean, I listen to a... I, I guess I listen... I subscribe to all those things, but I also, you know, I, I like a lot of sort of um, late 80s, early... Uh, sorry, late 70s, early 80s. Kind new, of wave. new wave. New wave, new wave, post-punk, uh, that kind of stuff as well. Right. And, and the writing process is you all bring stuff to the table, or, or do you handle most of it? Then? I mean, I tend to do the sort of writing part of it. Um, I tend to be quite a solitary thing, but um, then we all kind of have a lot of fun with it and arrange the songs and kind of flesh them out together. What's your favorite song to play live from the record? Um, I think oh, I think the Luna is probably our favorite song to play at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We tend, we tend to end on that. Um, Means you get to pull out the clarinet as well. Yeah, because yeah. I uh, only really get to, at the moment. There's only really one song where I get to play the clarinet live because I'm, you know, busy singing and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. playing guitar too, right? And yeah. How many how many instruments in a in a in a live show do you have to play besides the clarinet? Um, I only play electric and acoustic guitar and clarinet at the moment. Are other players much busier than he wants? Uh, well, Kathy's probably the busiest <laughs> one. And you switch instruments a lot. Yeah. And Leon switches between trumpet and piano. I mean, you know, like we all play a bunch of instruments that we don't necessarily at the moment. I mean, Kathy used to play a saw a lot live. Um, and I used, I've, I used to play a bit of keys sometimes, but I never really get to do that at the moment. I was at uh, Wolf Parade earlier this week. I don't know if you're mm. familiar with mm -hmm. them. They're from Montreal. And yeah. everybody on stage had a keyboard except the drummer. So, <laughs> so That's cool. they would play guitar and then he would turn and play. It's just amazing how much how much music now goes into producing a record like and, and, and your record specifically with so much instrumentation the live performance mm. must be crazy hectic it, I mean it is sort of hectic but yeah I mean we it's in the studio you're just so free to explore mm. any avenue you want and we, we lay it up like uh, we I think we had the whole band so six people playing guitars and mandolins at one point and then we uh, tracked that several times, overdubbed right. that. Uh, so, you know, you can do these crazy things when you're in the studio. And I think live, you know, we're not always trying to stay faithful. It's more about just capturing yeah. a spirit and yeah, for whatever sure. that means, you know, we, we try and do it. I, th I think in the studio for us it's so much more just to kind of create textures and play around with that. Right. And, yeah, well, it's live, exactly. It's so much more like bringing that kind of emotion to life and just kind of connecting with people on, on a personal level rather than, you know, the sort of the studio thing is, in a way, it's a bit of a kind of introspective thing. Where you right. So you don't plan ahead. I mean, you're, you're not, when you're sitting in the studio, you're not consciously thinking about how are we going to pull this off live. It's no. Kind of, no. You no, worry about that later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reservoir, your first record, was basically given away for free, right? You asked fans to to pay a dollar for the record? Well, online? we did this thing. It was for a month. For a month, oh, we for did a month. this thing where you could get it for a dollar. Yeah, yeah. We thought 
Thought Which is it. very different from giving it away for free. It's very well, different. It is very different, actually. Yeah. yeah. And how, how was the response to that? Uh, it, was, it was good. It was good. I think, I think it really helped us. I mean, it was, I guess it was just an experiment. You know, it was yeah. for fun. We were, we, were, we were free and easy. We didn't have a label to say no. <laughs> <laughs> and we, you know, we kind of, it was in the spirit of, you know, just why not? Um, right. And, and also, um, just trying to broaden things a little bit, because, you know, we've been in the UK for a while. It's kind of hard to get things going sometimes in the U.S. So right. um, that really, I mean, that really helped. Like people ask us, did it work? I'm always like, yes, <laughs> yeah. it did. It really did. How active are you guys yeah. on social media and the internet as, as a band or as, or or either individually or as a band? Well, we have a, we have a lot of long drives and we have some sort of internet connection. So we spend yeah we spend a lot of time um, kind of on on Facebook and email. Yeah. Um, trying to sort of we, well because we get a lot of a lot of people email us and ask us things and so we, we try and you know as much as possible kind of reply to everything and and we post a lot of the stuff kind of what we're doing and and we always have like a bunch of you know when playing a show there will always be you know twenty different comments about like oh you're gonna play that song right. or you know that kind of stuff. I, I think noticed. it's it's one of the ways that we connect with fans um, that's just uh, more than any other way I think right. definitely yeah. And uh, more than any other band that I know, I think we do it. But I think, I mean, it feels like we've got like a, a really good thing going. People tend to sort of pay attention to that kind of lo like quite a lot. Um, like for instance, the there was, the <laughs> you know, sometimes we'll um, like for instance this time we we sort of tweeted that oh we run out of things to read in the van <laughs> we really need some reading material and like for the next few shows like every night someone will bring us like a book parcel or oh, like wow. a pile of magazines and stuff and it was like great and you know people like it was like you know oh here's some books and like a letter kind of like this is why I like this book and blah blah blah, blah. you yeah. run out of money that's what I would do yeah 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 and it, it's also <laughs> so maybe next time we just ask for money <laughs> it, it's also a really important way to kind of for us, it's been a really important way to, to kind of bypass some of the gatekeepers of the industry. Right. I mean, less so over here, but in the UK, you know, sometimes uh, it's, it's tough with press, uh, radio, all of those things, and, uh, and labels as well. You yeah. know, the one dollar thing was another way of kind of getting Bypassing around the, those, those gatekeepers. Well, you know, press tends to need, they tend to like need a story or something to lash out, oh, they're part of that movement or right. that scene or whatever, whereas like, you know, we're... We don't obviously don't think of it in terms of like being a scene. You know, we like we're doing our thing. We're, we're trying to write good songs. You know, and like create something that will hopefully, you know, touch people on, on some level. And so, social networking is a kind of it's a way to skirt around yeah, sure, a lot of, for sure. of those. Even things. though the label guy is here, you don't really need a label too much <laughs> anymore, right? I mean, not, necessarily, not necessarily. No, not necessarily. It I mean, depends. Yeah. It depends. We, you know, we also are extremely ambitious in terms of what we want to achieve live. Um, you know how how we want to tour, how broadly yeah. we want to, mm -hmm. uh, to to reach an audience. So, at the same time, uh, you do need some money. Right, <laughs> and it's, that's the bottom line. And it's just like you know, and a label, they're like you know, they'll they'll know people who right. can sort of like so, you know, we would a lot of the things we want to do, we would kind of be at the at a loss. You know, we last time we played in New York, we had. Uh, we, we, so we made this video in the UK with uh, a couple of friends who are artists and uh, you know, we came up with this idea together of having uh, someone create a Harry Houdini stunt. Right. And then we, was, and then we were saying, you know, oh, well, let's, let's do this live as well. So you know, it was great having people over in New York who could find uh, someone, you know, someone stupid enough mm -hmm. to do a straight jacket, right. like upside down hanging straight jacket. Yeah. Like, and that had been done since Houdini apparently or, or not live publicly. Uh, what I was reading. It, Not oh, actually. okay. Really? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it has. But it but, it, but it's rare. It's rare. It's There's rare. not that many people that do it these days. At, at least upside down and such. Mm. Um, what's next? So you're touring this record, and, and, and you're, I'm sure you're doing a bunch of festival dates in the UK mm -hmm. and in North America. And, and what's well, we're doing the plan? some in Europe. We're doing Bonnaroo over here. We're doing a couple right. of festivals in the UK. But we're, you know, I think at the moment we're trying to just. Um, focus on writing a new record. Oh, you are. Yeah, yeah this so this, kind of this is the last out. week of our touring, like our solid touring yeah. on right. this record. Yeah. Uh, we're doing bits and pieces here and there, but we, yeah, we're going to try and spend some time writing for a winter release or a, or a fall release or not. We don't know. I mean, probably 2011. Yeah. Really? <laughs> you know, we'd love to put another record out this year, but um, I think what's going to happen is that we, you know, we've started writing. We're playing new songs at the moment already. Uh, we try to sort of squeeze in. 
a day in the studio. Whenever we have a day free, we try and right. sort of find a studio. So we've done that in Boston, in Berlin, mm -hmm. and um, when we've sort of just been around. And so we tried to do that. Oh, we did it in Austin as well. And um, hopefully, once the festivals are over, then we'll go into the studio again for like a first batch at least. Back home or, or in? We don't know. It kind of we depends. We're, we're, we're sort of looking into producers and studios at the moment. The, the first record was recorded in Connecticut, right? That's yeah, right. it was by, by a guy named Peter Catus. Yeah. Cool. Thanks so much for taking the time. Yeah, and I really man. appreciate it right. and uh, continued success. Yes. Thanks. Thanks.